Okay, so let's imagine, this is the left corner of the door. I've got my lift point at three feet six inches. I don't want to pull straight up, several hundred pounds. Well, there's my pulley. It's going into the, you know, the, the groove in the pulley there. And it's pulling out that way, straight sideways. Well, the pulley winds up at 45 degrees, so I can't have the mounting point straight up above the load. I've worked that out to be three and a quarter inches offset from where all this hardware, the holding the pulley up to the bracket, to where the actual cable enters, enters the pulley to have a straight pull up. So instead of three feet six inches, I have three feet two and three quarter inches. And that's from the lower corner of the door. So that's where I got to mount my bracket. Well, here are two brackets that are going to go bolting up to the I-beam up there. At the, very... the upper part of the bracket goes on here. The bottom part of the bracket is here. That's going to bolt straight into the four inch beam up there. Uh, what I'm worried, worried about is torque in that the pulley's going to be attached here. It's about two and a half inches. And it's going to be wanting to pull this way. So just to counteract that, I'm extending this little part. Put a bolt here and a bolt here, and that'll keep it from wanting to twist, if at all. Maybe I don't have to worry about it at all, but oh, why not? So I'll do that to both of these. Then I'll drill holes in all these and paint them. And then bolt it up tomorrow. Well, the pulley is hung it's using a D shackle, the bottom of a, I think that's a two by three inch angle iron. That's a quarter inch thick. Got this little extension out here because of the torque, because that's going to be pulling that way. Goes up to the top ceiling, ties in there. Another part of the same angle iron tied into the I-beam there. And then there's the other one doing the same thing. Now I have to hang something in that corner. It's not going to be as easy. Counterweights that I'm using are they're flat, but they're uh, quite wide, maybe 14 inches wide. So I've got to leave room for that in that corner. And I'm thinking I'll tie it in somehow to this header, or maybe that I beam that goes along the ridge of the uh, roof. I can't really tie into these uh, purlins because they're just light metal. They're really only meant to hold on the sheet metal. So whatever I do is going to have to be coming off that I-beam in the corner and this header. It'll have to have a brace and it's going to be holding all the weight. So um, something strong. Well, here's the pieces I've come up with for the corner brace. I just uh, I've fitted them, fabricated them. I'm just going to bolt them together now. Well, there you have it. Cross beam, a uh, brace, and another brace back there. This part here isn't really very strong. It's just a place keeper, but uh, the main support is going to be the cross beam. And then this one here to tie it into that strong corner post. And then the brace back there just makes a triangle so it can't pull away. And then you got the two pulleys that are facing toward those two pulleys. Straight down will be the counterweight.
I've got the cables on. There's some fine adjustment to do yet because these cables will have to be about the same length. And then because uh, when I'm terminating, I'm an equalizing device so that the counterweight goes onto these cables equally. This is the latching mechanism. It's just a pin on either side. Total movement of this is about one inch, a little over, inch and a quarter. And the way that works, just pull the handle. Counterweights are about where they should be. The door wound up where I expected it to be. Counterweight is about right, but um, because it's binding up on this side, I'm gonna figure out what's going on there. But it's 
dragging enough where the door doesn't operate smoothly up and down. Um, I tried changing positions of the pulleys up at the top to see if uh, hanging them so that they pulled up a little bit to the side could pull that corner away, but it, it wasn't enough. It had some effect, but not enough. So what I, something I had to do anyway is have some cross bracing in it. So I've bought some materials, some uh, eighth inch cable, some turnbuckles, and what I'm going to do is put in some X braces, see if I can get it to uh, hold square or bring it into square or I don't know what it's going to take. Uh, the rollers are working really well. Let me show you what I had, to, what I did at the top to try to work out this binding issue as well. So the counterweights are at the top of their travel. The door is shut. Here's what I've done to the brackets at the top. These are now offset. <clears throat> the pulleys, instead of being, they're about three inches offset to the left. And I did that in an effort to uh, try to. See if I can get the door to move over that way. It wasn't really effective, but it doesn't hurt it to leave it this way, so I'm just going to leave it. This is the load leveler thing that I came up with. Uh, the length of these cables can be a little bit different, but they're still going to share half the weight. It works pretty well. Before I put the flashing on up here, I was going to try one last thing. It still binds on this corner right about in here, which is about three feet. Why would it be binding just at the top? The door frame is as square as I can tell. Um, the header is square with the posts. Um, the only thing that can be wrong is these hinges. Hinges are too low, too high, too in, too far out, something like that. There's four of them. But the material itself is quite flexible, so maybe I figured I could try to do something just on this one corner. Uh, my reasoning is I could put a shim right here. And the shim doesn't do anything while the door is hanging here. It's maybe a little bit misaligned on this corner. It's just pushed in that way and it doesn't change the alignment in any way. But when the door gets close to the top, this piece is now kind of like this. It's making the wedge. It's coming up and making the wedge. And what happens by putting this, this shim in there, it's actually lowering it an eighth of an inch. It, it lowers this tie point of this wedge an eighth of an inch. And that means it kind of twists like this. And that means the bottom wedge right here, my thumb, uh, it's pulling away from that door frame. And that's what happened. It still has a lot of rolling resistance. So that's just a fact of life. But uh, I still have to come up with a way to winch it up and then uh, the door skin itself is going to add some weight and I'm thinking that should uh, pull itself down on its own weight. So uh, still, I'm quite pleased with this one little change. Just that one little alignment caused it to work better. Now all that's left to do is put the skin on the door and work on the flashing on the top. Mm -hmm.